Thank you, Cass. Now on to our next segment, Daily History News, where we give you all the groundbreaking history from centuries ago. Now, I'm your host, Shaylee Seitz, and we have a very special guest for you today, Mansa Musa. Hi, Mansa Musa. How are you doing today? I am doing wonderful. Thank you for asking yeah. and having me. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I, I noticed you have something very interesting over <laughs> here. Yes. So, I make it a personal thing of mine to always carry around gold. You know, you never know who you're going to come across. Yeah. Could be someone famous you want to get some good terms on. <laughs> I see, I see. <laughs> or someone in dire need of something, you know? Yes, I, yes, I understand. I, I, I can relate to that myself. <laughs> Alrighty. Now, let's get on to this very exciting interview. <laughs> Could you tell us a few things about your early years and how you came to be who you are? Yes, I would love to. So, I was born in 1279 CE. Um, my father was Fagolite, and I also had a brother named Solomon. My grandfather, Sandia Kira, was the first of the Kira dynasty. Wow. Yes, and he founded Mali. Oh my gosh. My grandfather, yes. My predecessor, um, Abu Bakr II, sadly disappeared at sea and yes it was very tragic just, he was just nowhere he was trying to explore the atlantic and he never came back so in 1312 ce i became ruler and molly of course was already a wealthy and beautiful empire but i was determined to make it better and so i did wow that all sounds very exciting. Um, on the subject of making Molly even better, could you tell us what your greatest accomplishment is? Wow, that's that's a <laughs> tricky question. <laughs> um, but I would think it would have to be spreading Islam and making Molly a known empire. You know, Molly was not very well known. Yeah, it was... I, I never knew about it until you came on the show. I can't even lie. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, it was mostly known within Africa, and you know, I felt like I, we could do better than that. So I went on a pil pilgrimage because, as you know, I am Islamic. And so I went to Mecca in 1327. I had this huge caravan with 60,000 men. Hmm. And 13,000 personal slaves. Everyone was wearing Persian silk. Oh, you are the fancy <laughs> kind you're explaining here. I, I, um, like I wanted to say, I really love your outfits today and your crown. Very pristine. Thank Very you. Pristine. I went something more low-key, classy, oh, yes, casual. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I rode on horseback, personally, mm -hmm. because... It was, it was a very long distance. It took about a year. Mm -hmm. um, I had 500 slaves surrounding me, all carrying about six pounds of, of the golden staff. It was pure gold. Oh my. Yes. And I also had um, 80 camels, every single one of them carrying 300 pounds of gold. Oh my goodness. That You are just <laughs> one flexor, aren't you, on your richness? <laughs> Gotta let it be known. <laughs> oh, I suppose. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, so I did stop in Cairo, Egypt for about three months on the way there. Yes, I was not a huge fan of the Sultan there, let oh. me say that. He had some ridiculous rules, in my personal opinion, about having to kiss the ground for him and oh. kiss his hand while I meet him. I was, me. <laughs> I was trying to claim that I was just passing through trying to get to Mecca not really I'm not really important but he insisted I meet him so I did he let he paid for all my housing and all that for three months which was pretty nice of him I will say mm -hmm. and since I'm still just a generous person I still gave him so much gold and bought so much things and they really quite liked me there <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> uh -huh. And 
like since all the merchants and traders raved about me that's pretty much how i got my name out there oh yes and because people would be trading with them from spain other places in europe and they would just hear about me and be like wow that person seems so rich just to be able to get away with all of that spending mm -hmm. and i am <laughs> very nice <laughs> yes and you know that's not the only thing i did i wasn't only trying to get my name out there it was for religious reasons um on the way back i built a couple of mosques um in the care uh, territories i conquered because I did conquer a few on the way. <laughs> Along with moss, I also built some universities and libraries. That is all very impressive. I know I wouldn't be able to do all that. <laughs> I'm sure if you put your mind to it, you could. Oh, uh, of course I could. Let's be real. <laughs> so my ancestors, they were all Muslim. They came into the faith and all my life, I've been heavily influenced by the religion. While the main reason was religious, I saw an opportunity to conquer and spread my name, and I took it. The places I conquered, for example, Gao, I turned into a center of culture mm -hmm. and um, a place to learn about Islam. Mm -hmm. Timbuktu is also a great example of how I use my pilgrimage to learn about how other cultures structure and build universities. And I mimicked that mm -hmm. and made a great place of learning for ev everyone. That, that's so that's so amazing that you were able to do that on this pilgrimage that you went on. And that it wasn't just all self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. Some people usually, you know, they do things for themselves and they don't think about others or think about what the good they can do in the world. They just care about, you know, themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very proud about those structures. I'll, I could talk about them all day. <laughs> they lasted for the next 500 years and... That's so impressive. They're some of my pride. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I, I totally understand how you could make that into just everything and how it's so... It's just, it's just so amazing that you could do that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um. Did Cass? Did you did you see where I was sitting? No. Um. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um. So I guess I'll. I'm gonna speak about how Mansa Musa tragically passed away. So Mansa Musa, after his passing in 1332. It's it's not said on how he died. He never mentioned. He just, I guess he just didn't care enough. He just, he left. But it's okay. He's a busy man. He's rich. He's making this amazing pilgrimage, you know. He has, he has priorities. So his son took over, but was only in power for four years until he died. And then his brother took over. I believe that it was foul play, but there isn't any evidence. You know, you, there's not said, but foul play probably was brought into that. Um, the empire broke into smaller states and eventually fell, sadly, after all of Mansa Musa's hard work that he put into it. His name even lived past his death and into the fall of Mali. Um, he also built cities, mosques, and universities that are still persisted after the fall of Mali. But in his opinion, in his obituary, it said that he was successful and brought good to the world. It was very nice to have Manson Wilson here today, and I hope you all enjoyed this this very interesting program we had today. And I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you, and good night. Welcome, Manson Musa. Oh, and you have gold. Gold. Yes. Would you like some? Yes, I would love some. Cameraman, would you like some gold? Okay, let's get let's give the cameraman some gold for his her gold hard everyone. Work. Everyone deserves some gold. Yes, gold. And why gold for all. I was gonna say, why why do you carry so much gold with you? Because I have that much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>